So, you want to turbo your car. Classic. You want to make some power. Make a bunch of cool noises. You want to be a boost creep and you want to make lots of dudes think you're cool. Trust me, I get it. But turboing your car can seem overwhelming. There's so many parts, there's so much to it. How do you know what to buy? What turbo is right for you? How do you even tune it? What is cooling? And maybe most importantly, how do you get all those exhaust gases from your engine into the turbo? Well, that's what we're gonna be looking at today. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit, how to turbo your car, six part spectacular. Part two, exhaust manifolds and downpipes. Big thanks to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. Now, as you guys know, I make a million dollars an episode and they pay me in cash, so I always have too much. This money is going straight to Nolan's college fund. I'm ruined. I'm ruined. As you guys know, I make a million dollars an episode. Joe. Cool jacket. Thanks, man, I know, but listen, any second now, a leaf blower is gonna come by and blow all that cash out of your hand, and if it does, no one's never gonna go to college, and then he's never gonna meet Marta, and his destiny to save the world will never be fulfilled. You gotta use one of these. Every Ridge wallet gives you the option to have a cash strap or a money clip so you can keep your cash safe and secure, styled to your liking. Nolan really saves the world, huh? How can I help? You can start by telling people to go to ridge.com slash donut. And if they use code donut, they'll save 10% off. But you gotta hurry, cause time is of the essence. Ah, looks like I gotta go. I think Nolan broke his back and isn't gonna make it home in time for Christmas. Not on my watch. Kind of my watch, but okay. <laughs> cool. All right, so here's the deal. Here's what we got. This is the CX Racing Kit. Now, originally, I wanted to get the Flying Miata kit for Money Pit Miata, but with the pandemic and the world the way it is, it's kind of hard to get your hands on the things that you want. And you guys wouldn't leave me alone about turboing the thing, so ultimately, I had to buy what I could get, and that's the CX Racing Kit. Now, this is one of the cheapest kits on the market. Still, it only costs $1,850 before taxes for all this stuff and it comes with pretty much everything you need to turbo your Miata. You've got a turbo manifold, a downpipe, a turbo, an intercooler, intercooler piping, a blow-off valve, and a super sweet red air filter. I am hoping to make 225 horsepower, which is almost double what it's making right now. The big question with the cheaper kits is quality and fitment. So as we install this whole kit, we'll evaluate quality and fitment of each piece as we go along. And we'll also just talk about each piece, what it is, how it works, what its job is, so you can understand what might work for you. Now this week, we're gonna be focusing on the hot side. We're gonna be focusing on turbo manifold and downpipe. How do you get all those exhaust gases from your engine into the turbo? What should you buy? What's gonna work for you? We're gonna talk about that and more all day long, baby. First thing we gotta do, as always, is get that old stuff off of there. But for the first time, I'm not taking off stock stuff. We're gonna be removing the header that we installed some time ago for an episode. All right, so the job of the exhaust manifold is to get exhaust gases out of the head of the engine as quickly and efficiently as possible. And a really well-designed exhaust manifold will promote what's called scavenging. Now we've talked about all this before in the episode where we installed this exhaust manifold, but briefly, scavenging is a basically a little pocket of vacuum behind each exhaust pulse that helps pull the next exhaust pulse out of the engine. But how is a turbo manifold any different from a regular exhaust manifold? Well, for one thing, it's gonna have a turbo bolted to the end of it, hopefully. Uh, and that turbo kinda acts as a big old blender and it kinda negates a lot of the effects of scavenging. So you can still get some scavenging with a turbo manifold, but it's not quite as big of a thing. So the turbo manifold, we're mostly focusing on flow and reducing turbulence. Getting the exhaust gases to the turbo as smoothly as possible so that all their energy is used spinning the turbo. Now that we know that, what should you look for if you're shopping for a turbo manifold? The first question you should ask yourself, and it's the big one, how much money are you willing to spend? If you are willing to spend a lot of money, you can get some really nice stuff. 
But if you're not willing to spend a lot of money, you can get by with the cheaper stuff too. It's just not gonna be as nice. What are my power goals? If you're not trying to push the limits of your platform, maybe you don't need the nicest, bestest, most expensivest, craziest thing. Maybe you can get by with something a little cheaper. Now, one of the next questions you should ask is, what kind of turbo are you gonna be running? And more specifically, what turbo flange? So where your turbo mates to the exhaust manifold, well, there are different flanges. For example, uh, what we're gonna be running is called a T3 flange. Our exhaust manifold and our turbo both have a T3 flange so they can mate up to each other. And then uh, one of the other questions that you really don't have much of a say in answering is what is on the market for your platform? You might be a little bit limited just based on what's available. Next, in terms of a turbo manifold, where do you want your turbo to be mounted? In the case of the Miata or anything else you're thinking about turboing, that wasn't already turbo, well, it's kind of just up to you where you put that turbo. The options that you have can be boiled down in some ways to a top mount or a bottom mount turbo. Now, a top mount turbo like this is called that because the turbo is mounted on top of the turbo manifold. So that places the turbo nice and high, uh, which obviously looks pretty cool. It's pretty easy to swap this turbo out, pretty easy to get to my oil and coolant lines, uh, pretty easy to work on in general. But it also looks pretty illegal if you're worried about that. And another downside is that this increases under hood temperatures uh, pretty significantly. This, this makes a lot of heat, and with it sitting up here, that heat just kind of takes over the engine bay. Now, back to the Miata. Uh, so, the other option is a bottom mount turbo, where the turbo just sits down on the bottom of the manifold. And that's great for some reasons, too. It's A, a lot stealthier, so if you get pulled over and they pop your hood, who knows, maybe they won't even see it. Also, it really reduces uh, the engine bay temperatures because the turbo is way down here, rather than sitting up here just cooking the whole engine bay. And usually, you get a, a more straight exhaust, you see, because with the turbo down there, the exhaust pretty much just has to go down a little bit and then straight back. So you get a really nice straight exhaust. With the top mount turbo, you're pretty much always gonna have to have an S-shaped downpipe of some sort. But then you kind of think back to your power goals and for 225 horsepower, I think that'll be fine. Now, what is not an option is removing this header from the car so we can install our turbo manifold. So without further ado, I'm gonna yank this thing out of here. You're out, bud. Ooh. Okay, now it's ready to pop off of there. Now we just gotta finish up top. And then this thing's out. There she is. A little worse for wear, but not too bad. So now that this non-turbo manifold's out of the way, we can start doing some turbo stuff. All right, this is the turbo manifold that came with our CX racing kit. All in all, it seems to have decent flanges. The welds seem to be decent enough. So this should work. Uh, it's maybe not the prettiest example, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And uh, well, I'm cheap. Well, let's talk overall about tubular manifolds versus cast manifolds. It's gonna be tubular. Tubular, oh! First off, a well-designed tubular manifold is generally gonna offer the highest peak horsepower for a given setup. They're just better designed for flow and because they aren't cast, they can be pretty intricate and, and all these long tubes can be made, which can help you make more peak power. So in general, uh, your tubular manifolds are gonna be more expensive because there's a lot of labor required to make one of these. All these welds and all this tube fitting up is usually done by human hand. So as opposed to the tubular manifold where this is made by welding a bunch of pipes together, the cast manifold is made by casting molten metal uh, into a shape. So for that reason, they're pretty cheap to make and they can be really durable if they're made well. And for that reason, a lot of OEMs use cast manifolds for turbo setups. All right, so now that we have a general understanding of a tubular manifold or a cast manifold, let's go ahead and install our tubular manifold on the Miata. Finally, this is the first turbo part going on. I found a new shirt and we're ready to put this thing on the car. Uh, hopefully, should go pretty easily. Let's find out. Okay, so it's kind of in there, but we've run into our first interference problem. You can see that our new header is uh, making contact with our dipstick tube. So I'm gonna rip the header back off and probably just bend the dipstick tube. Should be fine. Let's see if that's enough bending. Gorgeous. 
All right, so we got the turbo manifold in place and it didn't come without its headache. I mean, that's just kind of how it goes with cheap turbo stuff. Uh, now all I gotta do is throw the nuts on this thing, tighten them down, and then our turbo manifold is on. But the next thing we need to talk about is the other part of the exhaust system, the part that gets the exhaust from the turbo to the rest of your exhaust, the downpipe. Downpipes. Uh, they're pretty simple, but they're pretty important because what happens right after the turbo actually has a pretty big impact on the way the turbo spools up and makes boost. Uh, so gases in general, especially exhaust gases like these, like to flow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Your downpipe, that's gonna be your low pressure side. And the lower you can make the pressure in your downpipe, the easier gas is gonna flow from the high pressure side in front of the turbo to the low pressure side, your downpipe. The biggest downpipe you can run in terms of diameter is gonna be the best option for a turbo car. It's gonna help the turbo spool up because it helps flow. So if you're if you're shopping for a downpipe for your turbo build, it is nice to buy a manifold and downpipe together because then you know that the downpipe is supposed to work with the placement of the turbo, which is dictated by your manifold. But if you're separated and you're, you've already got an exhaust manifold and you're looking for a downpipe, some platforms might have a lot of options out there that you can pick up that will go from turbo placement to your stock exhaust and you'll be gravy. But it's not always gonna be that simple. You're not always gonna find an off-the-shelf downpipe for your custom setup. But luckily, these are pretty easy to make and they're not that expensive. You can go to most exhaust shops and talk to them about what you want and get a downpipe made for relatively cheap. So with all that said, let's go slam this puppy on the car. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing a, a pretty critical part. There's no turbo. Although, it does look like that's gonna work. Spectacular. Uh, okay, so yeah, obviously we're missing a little spinny boy right there for the downpipe to mount to. We are gonna do that next week. But I guess for now, where I come from, it's customary to fire up any car that you've got the exhaust off of. And this one, well, it turned the exhaust up. So if there's gonna be any flames, we should see them. It's gonna be loud. Well, no fire got shot out, but hey, that's a nice way to break in a new intake manifold. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're finally cracking into the turbo stuff. I hope you guys are excited. So next week, talking about turbos is gonna be so much fun. I can't wait. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Donut at Donut Media. And I will see you guys next week for a turbo. And maybe we'll make some fire at some point in the life of this car.